So, yeah, I'm Stina Sinkhorn. Thank you guys for coming to see my presentation. This is going to be pretty informal. But, yeah, so I'm here to tell you about my summer in Beaufort, my Apex 2021 internship with the North Carolina Maritime Museum. I think I can do it this way. Maybe. Okay. So why Beaufort? It seems kind of weird. Like Lynn was saying, I go to school in Ohio. I live in Denver, Colorado. So why would I come to the other side of the country for an internship? I've been coming to Beaufort since basically forever. My grandparents had a beach house down in the Outer Banks before a hurricane happened. And every summer we would come to the museum since my grandpa loves ships and pirates are really cool for little kids. So growing up, I would come here every summer and I loved going to the library and just seeing all the different artifacts and just being in the museum. Museum. So when I started school, I started to get more interested in archival work. And that naturally led to me looking into museum studies because museums have a lot to do with collecting artifacts and storing them in a way that's easily manageable and accessible. So when I was trying to think of an internship I could do for the summer, because experience is really important when you're starting to look for a job, I naturally thought of a favorite museum of mine, the North Carolina Maritime Museum. So I emailed Lynn fall, no, winter of 2019, and we actually settled on my doing the internship, I think in February of 2020. And you guys can imagine what happened next. <laughs> but we were able to put it off for a year, and I was able to come back, reapply for my APEX funding, and then come out here again. So I was really happy to be able to do that. I received funding for my school's experiential learning department, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. Every college will have one of these. If you guys are looking to go to school, connect with your counselors and people who will give you money for doing cool things. Really recommend it. Okay. So why collections management? I'm not sure if any of you know what collections management is, but all of these artifacts in the museum, they don't just come out of nowhere. There is a huge, long, kind of tenacious process behind getting an artifact from out there in the big world to sitting in a display case with nicely printed information. And that process is what I was really interested in learning about, since objects don't come from nowhere. They come from donors, they come from archeologists, they come from some person who was walking on a beach, saw something shiny and found a pirate coin, which apparently has happened multiple times in this area. So I was really interested to learn about that part because I'm interested in archives, which the two fields aren't necessarily directly related, but there's a lot of overlap in theory. For example, data management, both archives and collections are concerned with making sure you know something and then you can figure out what that thing is 20 years down the line. Floppy disks are a great example of what happens when you don't consider information sustainment, <laughs> which is a big term, but basically we want people to be able to understand what happens with things 20 years down the road. And that's where archives and collections kind of overlaps. And I kind of mentioned this before, but experience is a huge, huge deal nowadays for getting a job. Any job out there that's long-term and sustainable will have the prerequisite one to three years of experience preferred. You're gonna hear that a lot in life, so I was really happy to be able to come to this internship because this is a whole summer of experience that is really valuable to me. But yeah, that's why I was really interested in working with Lynn and Tessa in the collections department, just because I was so excited to be able to learn about the processes, learn more about the overlap in the field, and most of all, gain that valuable experience. And this is the people who are funding me, my Apex department at Worcester. They are great people. I actually was given a faculty mentor who I've been checking in with every week and just kind of making sure I'm meeting my goals. They offer money to unpaid internships, and a lot of internships nowadays are becoming unpaid, unfortunately, just because it's hard to find funding, especially in a museum. You know, things aren't free, and bringing on an intern for the summer can be expensive. That's why schools have started creating summer funding programs. We support students who do on-site immersive work, are given meaningful tasks, and can perform a variety of capacities and with a mixture of employees. That's kind of like a tagline of who they fund. So when I brought them my internship, was like, hey, would you be willing to fund this? They got really excited because my work here kind of fits in perfectly within this parameter. And I'm gonna show you why I was able to fill all those. So 
So I say this because I actually started a day early. There was a miscommunication on my part. I was supposed to start June 2nd, but I got really excited and came in on June 1st. But it was okay. I actually got to meet everybody at the staff meeting that day and I got an early start, but an unexpected beginning. So my first few weeks in Beaufort, they're kind of like what you might experience at a normal job. There was lots of orientation. Christine took me around the museum, gave me a lovely tour. I got to tour all the outer buildings like Wellens, boat storage. I got to go over to the Whale Marine Society run by Keith. It's really cool when it opens up. I encourage you all to go visit. Loved it. I also got to learn about integrated pest management and the hobos. So funny story about my, I think it was my third or second day here. Part of working in a collections department means you have to be aware of the pests that might come into your exhibits and die on center stage. There are a few cockroaches in the cases kind of speared them out, but that was just another part of collections management. You don't want bugs messing up your lovely artifacts or moths eating all your lovely textiles. And hobos, that's another part of collections management. It's environmental readings. It's a very humid place here. Old stuff does not like humidity, so you have to monitor the humidity and make sure it's within a sustainable level. Another part of collections management and experiential learning. And then another, I've been taking a lot of field trips and I'm so happy that Tessa and Lynn have been so understanding about showing me around. I got to go to the Southport Museum and that was really cool because while we were there, we also went to the Underwater Archaeological Bureau, which is this really cool place right near Fort Fisher. Lots of fun, absolutely loved it. I've got some pictures I'm gonna show you. And then the last part is one of the more menial tasks I've been doing, but it's a super, super important part of collections. Cataloging. Cataloging is where you assign an object in your museum, a number, you describe it, you look at the history, you basically attach the metadata that will be important 20 years down the line to the object and store it forever in an online database. But you also have the paper database. So, you know, if one catches fire or a hacker gets into the system and destroys everything, you still have the information in one form or another. So that's kind of how my first few weeks went. Those are some of the books I read in my first days. Good books, very intense reading, but if you're interested in museums, you're gonna be doing a lot of reading. So this is my trip to Underwater Research Branch, or the Underwater Archaeological Bureau. It was a lot of fun. We got to see all these cool outer buildings. That was at Fort Fisher. They have these huge cannons on the underwater archaeological grounds, and they were like, like bigger than the cannons in the museum. Huge things just sitting on the ground because they didn't have any other place to put them. Great fun though. Those are guns. So archeology, span if any of you are interested in archeology, span I recommend you look them up because they take interns as well and they do a lot of cool work. Those are guns from a civil war shipwreck found off the coast. And what they do with wood is they put them in these treatments and iron and basically desalinate. So take out the salt from all these artifacts over a long period of time using big bathtubs of chemicals. And these things are like as big at the table and there are hundreds and hundreds of Civil War era guns just sitting in these bathtubs. It is so cool. And that, that picture is from the ferry and that is another part of a gun. There were lots of guns at this branch of the underwater archeology. span It was really cool though. Like I said, if you're interested in archeology, span look them up, they're really cool, really interesting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So the first few weeks at the museum would help me to establish a solid understanding of the fundamentals and different purposes of museums collections. It's kind of just a summary of that part. And now this is the two big projects I've been working on, Menhaden, Fish, and Taffrail Logs. So I've been working with David Bennett to kind of just do some rudimentary and introductory research into the Menhaden fishing industry in Southport because he's preparing an exhibit on commercial fishing. And my main purpose in doing that, I've been looking into old newspapers because when you're writing an exhibit, a lot of it is detective work. You're given, you find names, you find out who those names belong to, you find out who was of significance, you look up boats, you look up random weather articles from the 19th 1930s because men hated were influenced by weather patterns and would redirect their migration patterns and stuff like that. 
that part of working in a museum is really more about being a detective rather than cataloging, which is more about kind of managing data. Both involve a good deal of research, it's just different kind of directed research, if that makes sense. But my end result, I'm in the middle of this, will be a research report that will hopefully help establish some like baseline knowledge for working on the exhibits. But that's been a big part of what I've been doing for the non-traveling portions of my internship. And taffrail logs. So I actually have them here. So this is the second big project. Lynn has been going through and kind of reorganizing the different navigational equipments that the collections department has. And these are taffrail logs. A taffrail log, for anybody who doesn't know navigational maritime equipment, is basically an old time speedometer. This is the register. It's the part where the numbers are and where you can actually see how fast you're going. And this is the main working part of a taffrail log. The way it works, this goes in the water and spins. For every rotation, it makes a rotation on this guy. So it's basically a way of tracking your speed on a ship before they had modern technology. The examples I have up here are from the 1940s. And part of what I was doing with these was working with our conservator, Michelle, to kind of give condition reports, look at them, see what kind of corrosion was present, tell if they needed any cleaning. Because the thing about working in a museum, I'm not sure if you noticed this, every department is really connected with each other. So part of working with the collections department was learning how the collections department worked with other people like the exhibit person or the conservator person. So I was working with Michelle to basically say, is this object old? Is it broken? Is anything eating away at it and is it actively decaying? <laughs> These examples are in pretty good condition, which is why I brought them down. But there's a second part to working my work with these. A second part of this was assessing whether or not the museum needed them, because the museum gets a lot of stuff every single year. And that means you have to, for example, this is a rotator. We have nine rotators right now, many of which share very similar characteristics and don't have history to the area. So this one doesn't have any history to the era. It's in pretty rough shape. It might need some conservation, but not a ton. But it's not really meaningful to the history of the area. So this would be a piece we'd recommend for deaccession and give to another museum, and they would put it on a display in a more appropriate setting. Or it can be used for education. The point is, part of what I was doing was figuring out if these objects were worthwhile. In contrast, this guy over here, this guy's from the 1930s. He's a big, heavy clock. If you guys want, you can come up afterwards and I can show them to you. He would be valuable because we have a donor, we have a history of use, we know where he came from, and we know his purpose for the area. So this is the kind of thing a museum wants for its exhibits and to keep in its collections. So that's been a big part of my work over the summer. Just figuring out, I've had like, 20 of these that I've been going through and saying, is this worth to keep? Is it interesting? Is it in good condition? Would we like to keep it in the long run? And I'm still in the middle of figuring out which ones we'd like to keep. But that's another big part of collections, where you work with the conservator, you assess the condition, and then you assess whether or not you want to keep it within your collection and whether it's worthwhile to keep it. So that's another big portion of collection management. That's more of the management aspect. So yeah, there's another picture. I think that's the type of log I have here. And that's when me working in the lab with Michelle. It was lots of fun. She's also taking on interns I know in the future, so maybe conservators are everywhere. I really recommend if you're interested in science and museums, that's a great field to look into. I think you guys did some work the other day with conservators. Really recommend it. Did not know it was a field before I came here. Really cool field. Really, really cool. <laughs> So these are, that's pretty much it for the presentation, but I have to say this summer has been like nothing but an immense success for me. I'm so happy I was able to put it off a year and come back because I've had a great time. I've learned so much both about museum collections and the environment in which a museum exists. And I'm not sure if you guys know this, but this museum is part of the huge branch of museums, libraries, and educational facilities within the state of North Carolina. And that's really, really cool because that means you're able to pull all this different information together and present it to the public in a consumable format. So. That's been really cool to learn. I've been able to meet lots of new people, learn lots of new things, and 
yeah, I know whatever specialty I end up pursuing, whether it's collections management, archives, or maybe even paper conservation, we'll see. I'm sure I'll definitely bring this experience with me. And yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody has any questions or wants to come up and look at the taffrail logs more closely, but. I have a question. What's been your favorite artifact that you've seen or worked with or studied? Oh, that's. So there is actually a rotator that's really cool. I couldn't find it or I couldn't find which fin it was on, but there was a rotator we had that had a thumbprint on it that looked like it's from the 1940s, which is also really cool. But I also love books and there's some really cool, I was able to go to the QAR lab and that lab has some lots of really cool paper artifacts that are kind of being dried out. That was also really cool because books and paper don't survive underwater, so the few scraps that we have are like ridiculously cool. But that's probably my favorite just because I'm a book person. What does Hobo stand for? Oh, I'm not Tesla. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they're, if you guys want to try looking for them, they're like in all the exhibits, they're these little boxes. I think there's one over there, but yeah, there's one behind the pirate, but they're in a, the more sensitive exhibits and just kind of to read humidity and stuff. But Tessa gathers the readings, so that was a fun adventure going on and noticing them because once you notice them, you're like, oh, they're everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, that was fun. Cool. Thank <laughs> you.